with my recent trip to Florida, it got me to think, what can't we grow in the Central Valley? Uh, I mean, just comparing to what they can grow there, I mean, I think we can really just grow about just anything. When you look around uh, my neighborhood, I mean, it's most people just have lawn, which in my opinion is, is just a bit wasteful. I mean, it doesn't really do a whole much. I mean, it just sucks up water. It doesn't really provide a whole lot of uh, oxygen. I mean, it doesn't absorb a whole lot of carbon dioxide at the same time. But trees, these are like really low maintenance. I mean, with the right application and the right techniques, you really can grow just about anything. So I did just receive my most recent mulch shipment just last week. And as you can see, I mean, I, I keep emphasizing on it, but this really is the amount of mulch that you want. Uh, I mean, it's, I would guess to be maybe eight inches or so high, but yeah. So yeah, just with, with trees, I mean, tropical trees in general, you could really just uh, save quite a bit of money. I mean, I don't know if you realize how expensive fruits are, but uh, yeah, I mean, when you grow your own, it, it not only does it taste better, but you're also saving quite a bit of money. And most trees are very, very heavy producers. I mean, majority of the tropicals are just crazy heavy producers. I mean, this Thai guava, oftentimes the, the branches will actually break uh, just because the, the, it's so heavily loaded. So we've been having to actually thin this out. I mean, as you can see, there's new flower formations coming up. So, and just coming back here too, I mean, the, the longens, The flowers are uh, opening up, but yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, the, the thing with trees, tropical trees especially, is once they get established, it, it really does get better each year. I mean, the store fruit, uh, I mean, these trees are known to be just quite heavy producers. I mean, so much so that, you know, as the fruits get loaded on the tree, I mean, I, I really have to literally um, support them with, with the ropes, otherwise it, it will touch the ground. So I'm gonna take you to the back where I, I wanted to talk about some of the, the techniques that you want to employ here in the Central Valley to get your tropicals thriving. Going back to lawn just a bit i mean when you know five years ago six years ago before i i had all this right here in the ground i had a a nice lawn just like basically all my neighbors here and uh i, I mean i i i was really having to mow the lawn twice a month uh every two weeks uh and, and that process really front and back including the trimming of the edging that usually would take a good hour and a half to two hours per session. So the, the thing with trees is once you get them in the ground and once they're established, they're virtually almost maintenance free. I mean, on occasions, you know, every year I apply a fresh batch of mulch. Uh, you know, I cut down the Mexican sunflower and the comfrey and, and use that as mulch. Uh, prune them or, or, uh, on occasions, but these trees are essentially self-sustaining. Um, so th that's what's cool about you know growing your own fruits uh, with trees is the fact that they are mostly maintenance-free for the most part, and um, you know they, they do provide you with a quite a bit of uh, tasty treats. Uh, Pineapple guava, I mean, this 
I, I'm really expecting this guy to finally set foot this year. I mean, with pineapple guavas, it, it, it does take him uh, a couple of years once they start flowering to really produce food. I mean, the, the, the tree really needs to be established. I mean, the size of the trunk needs to be a good size. But in the interim, while it's working on setting fruits, I'm going to um, eat the petals. Um, pineapple guavas, the, the petals, or the, the flowers of the petals, or um, edible, of course. Sweet, very sweet. So, you know, I, I, I remember just years ago, watching a, a YouTube clip of, of, uh, a, of a gentleman up in, I want to say it was Minnesota, but it was a very cold climate. Uh, he, he was, um, he had a project that, that he wanted to essentially try to grow a citrus in the ground in Minnesota. And of course, they, it snows there, so they really can't grow anything in the ground there. But he had this set up where essentially he had it so sheltered where he had a generator kicking in uh, and then producing a, a heated greenhouse uh, with the tree in the ground during the summers, uh, during the winter season, the snow season. And, and that got me thinking, I mean, that's a lot of effort just for one little orange tree. And, you know, here we are. I mean, this really, citrus in the Central Valley, it's a no-brainer. I mean, we are known for growing oranges in our area. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of things that we can grow here that really aren't grown anywhere else. I mean, they, I'm sure if they try, they can, but we have a very unique climate where it, it, it's insanely hot, and at the same time, it is insanely cold. So the trees that Tropical trees that, that need the heat uh, thrive in our area. Um, and deciduous trees like jujubes, um, uh, apricots back there that need to chill out also thrives here. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> loquats, of course. So as you can see, most of my trees are still kind of waking up. I mean, it, you know, you, you see new growths here and there, uh, Thai guavas, even the climbing water is waking up. But with our climate, we have, when you look at it, we've, we've got about maybe eight months worth of growing season, and then four months to just kind of have the trees relax. And, and in some ways, that's actually a really good uh, schedule for the trees. I mean, well, just checking out the uh, dragon fruits here. It, it, it flowered, but I, I didn't hand pollinate it last year. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's really not a whole lot that we can grow here. Um, yeah, it, it, it will take some time and techniques with, with growing a lot of these. But um, yeah, I mean, even Mangosteen, I mean, this guy was, I want to say it was just a month ago that I put it in the ground, but it, it's showing some new growth there, so it seems to be taking it. Uh, I mean, of course, the mangosteen, that, that's just a bit extreme, on the extreme side of things. But, um, yeah, Etamoya, give it a nice haircut. Even wax jambu. Thai jambu variety. So, oh, and you know what? I, I know I keep putting the emphasis on the mulch, but I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm five, six. The, the fence is about six foot tall. This is how much mulch I've got here. And, and mulch is one of the techniques that you want to uh, uh, apply when trying to grow uh, tropicals here in the Central Valley because you really will need to depend on the mycorrhizal fungus to enhance the, the growing of your tropical fruit trees. Black sapote, you give it a nice haircut. So yeah, uh, I mean the mangoes are 
flowering. Um, well, two of them are anyway. Uh, Lancetilla, as you can see, these are a number of small pea-sized fruits that I'm sure a lot of them will fall out and maybe five or six will stay. But um, yeah, so with, with trees that um, are flowering uh, and, and that that we lack the, the natural pollinators, um, just just attract them. I mean, f for example, um, you know, mangoes, uh, when, when they flower, they're, of course, pollinated by flies. I mean, although you'll see some bee activities on them, but for the most part, mangoes are pollinated by flies. So what do you do? Well, you um, draw a bunch of, um, you know, garbage. Well, not garbage, just peelings and stuff that, that will in turn attract the pollinators. So, so th that's just another tip that you can employ to uh, make sure that your trees will successfully set fruits. Patango tuba, I want to say this guy is flowering. Yeah, Patango tuba. Even the Anonas, uh, the Chelmoyas, uh, I mean these are a bit too young uh, but there are a number of flowers that's being formed. I'm probably going to end up removing these flowers just because I, I do want these guys to be a, a certain size before they actually concentrate a lot of their energy into food production. Um, but yeah, I mean, Chiamoya is probably one of the easiest uh, tropical fruit trees to grow here and it, it's also perhaps one of the tastiest around. So yeah, just um, th there is going to be an initial investment, you know, if you're wanting, if you're short on time and if you want a grafted tree. Uh, these aren't cheap, I mean, yeah, I want to say, you know, when I had these, I think they were $45, $50 a, a set. So there, there is that initial investment. Um, However, as with most tropicals, they germinate fairly easily from seed. Um, so if you're short on budget and you have time, just grow them from seed. Uh, let, me, let me show you, I mean, how easy it is to grow these tropicals from seed. Black diamond wax jambus, these will set fruit in about three years. And I mean, it literally cost me nothing. I mean, it's, it was just all from seed. So yeah, just there's really just nothing wrong with growing them from seed. In fact, in many ways, from the perspective of getting acclimated, seedlings do so much better in, in our climate, uh, provided that you protect them somewhat for during the first couple of years. But uh, yeah, I mean, the a llama is uh, waking up. Yeah, so th that was it. I, I just wanted to kind of really show you that we could really just grow about just anything that, that, that um, you put your mind to. I mean, yes, some, some tropicals are trickier to grow than others, uh, but for the most part, I, I mean, I, I find my success rate to be pretty high when growing, you know, many of these tropicals that really shouldn't even make it here. I mean, only, only in the Central Valley where, you know, you would, you got like wax shampoo next to jujubes and even a, uh, what, probably one of the best tasting apricots. Uh, in fact, this is actually my only stone fruit tree, the um, golden sweet apricot. Um, <laughs> so speaking of, some of the techniques that, that I employ. This is bordering the line of um, laziness. <laughs> Can't tell if it's laziness or if it's efficient. Um, but anyway, see that uh, tab right there? That, that's actually my fertilizer mechanism. I've got these liquid organic um, fertilizers that is in the tank. I've got it hooked, it, hooked up to my um, Bluetooth um, automatic sprinkler. And essentially, as it waters the tree automatically every hour or so, it siphons the um, fertilizer and waters and feeds the tree at the same time. So 
it, to me, it's, it's really a, a hands-off approach. So, yeah, yeah that, that's what I mean. For the most part, most of my trees at this stage uh, is relatively self-sufficient. I mean, I, I can't say, you know, compared to when I had the lawn, I'm spending far less time with the trees, taking care of them, than mowing the lawn, fertilizing the lawn. And the lawn looks nice, but it really doesn't do me any good. So anyhow, just kind of wanted to just let you know, I mean, there's just plant a tree. I, I, I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. All right, have a good afternoon.